The world is almost incomprehensibly large. Mountain ranges that stretch beyond the horizon, oceans with depths that will forever go unexplored, forests with secrets buried deep beneath the green blankets of life. The sheer scale of nature is staggering, a scale bolstered by some truly titanic inhabitants. Wyvern and beasts prowl the lands of the frontier, their thundering steps the heartbeat of their kingdoms. It is easy to see the world as defined by these monsters. But that would do a disservice to the numerous smaller natives of the grasslands and forests, the critters of the deserts, the underdogs of the volcano. While the largest creatures may inspire the most awe, one must not forget that wonder dwells everywhere, even, or maybe especially, in the lives of small monsters. Small monsters are not a biological category, but a functional one, defined by the guild to differentiate between the threats their hunters may encounter. While small monsters can hold their own and can cause trouble occasionally, it is not particularly common for quests that target them to be issued. Most small monsters just live out their lives in the wild, unbothered and generally unimpeded. As the title suggests, many of them are rather diminutive in stature. Size is however not an indicator of strength, as is the case with one of the most famous small monsters. While Rathalos and Diablos may seem more fierce, ask any hunter what monster they would never want to see on a quest. The majority will, to your surprise, answer with a shuddering Bullfango. These hardy, small fanged beasts have managed to instill terror in the hearts of many veterans. This may seem odd, until the Bullfango's unique characteristics are considered. These boar-like creatures are covered in extremely thick fur that is additionally enforced with bony growths underneath it. This protective coat works as an almost perfect temperature insulator for both hot and cold environments. Thanks to this unique defensive adaptation, the Bullfango can thrive in almost any environment, be it a jungle, a frozen mountain, or a smoldering volcano. Combined with the species' unusually fast reproduction rate, this makes Bullfango perhaps the most successful mammal so far known to the guild, appearing far and wide in large, healthy populations. The only area thus far free of Bullfango are the plains of the New World, as Bullfango yet remain exclusive to the Old Continent. But on that continent, they wreak havoc. Bullfango live in large herds that rely on strict social interplay. Each Bullfango knows its herdmates intimately, and is able to recognize them reliably and swiftly. This is necessary because Bullfango are, by instinct, extremely territorial. Should they sense any presence near them, their immediate reflex is to attack it. So, the herd needs to be extremely tight in order to prevent accidentally attacking each other on instinct. It still happens occasionally, however, and has been observed. This territorial aggression is generally directed towards outsiders, though. With their sensitive snouts, Bulfango can monitor their entire environment via scent, similar to their immediate relatives, the moss swines. Once a Bulfango herd identifies an intruder, they all charge at them, their sharpened tusks ready to pierce, and their hard hooves ready to crush. Curiously, hunters have reported that Bolfango seem to have a specific grudge against humans, as they will allegedly ignore all other threats to try and attack hunters whenever possible. In these situations, a herd of Bolfango can spell disaster. Their thick coats and bony growths are also great at deflecting man-made weapons, making these beasts much sturdier than one might expect. Bullfango tusks are however considered a valuable trading commodity, so these confrontations are not without reward. The tusks primary purpose, besides violence, is digging through the ground, 
both for foraging and defensive purposes, whenever the Bulfango would like to burrow underground. Their tusks grow throughout the Bulfango's entire life, and while they start out being symmetrical, one will eventually outgrow the other. Bullfangos with especially large tusks that have begun showing signs of asymmetry tend to lead their herds as alphas, and are reclassified as bulldromes by the guild. Bullfango represent maybe the most dreaded small monster thus categorized. Many of its peers are much less problematic, and some are even downright docile. Such is the case for another well-known beast, the Aptonoth. These herbivorous Ornithischians are, like the Bulfango, fairly widespread, having even been seen in the New World. They do not however have the adaptations to survive in varied climates. They will generally only settle and live in warm, green environments. That can mean forests, grasslands, jungles, overgrown islands, the drier zones of marshlands, and even the patches of vegetation that often surround volcanic areas. Wherever plants bloom, Aptonoth are generally not far. They live in herds that can range from less than a few dozen to over a hundred, led by the heaviest male. Aptonoths spend most of their time grazing, and generally exhibit behaviors similar to ruminants such as cows. While they have crested heads and spiked club tails, Aptonoths are virtually harmless to most around them, as they generally don't care much for anything that isn't green. This however makes them the ideal prey for just about anything larger than them, be it herds of runner wyverns or large flying wyverns. When in danger, Aptonoth will generally attempt to flee, but if that is not an option, the oldest members will attempt to shield the young with their bodies, using their spiked tails as a deterrent. Small Aptonoth herds are unfortunately largely helpless against most predators. At their most sizable, however, Aptonoth herds can occasionally hold their own against their assailants, and there is at least one confirmed case of a massive Aptonoth herd collectively killing an adult Rathalos that had attacked their young. Besides the ones in the wild, there is also a sizable population of domestic Aptonoth, kept as beasts of burden and cultivated for their popular meat. They are generally seen in large cities or towns that have merchants going through them. The wild lands of the frontier house creatures of many different tempers. Docile giants and temperamental troublemakers live alongside each other and give this world spice and life. But if one were to inquire about the single most common sight found in the old world, it would be that of a horde of raptors, screeching their way to their next meal. Raptor is a fairly generic term, but within guild halls it refers to the clade of runner wyvern, an infraorder of Avepoda, which itself is the suborder that encompasses all bird wyvern. Runner wyvern are defined through their wingless bipedalism, with their front limbs having articulate hands and claws. This group can be further split into three categories. The New World Raptors, the Old World Raptors, and the Dog Wyvern. The most widespread of the bunch are the Old World Raptors, which includes four distinct species, the Velocity, the Jia, the Gen, and the Ayo. While they differ in habitat and appearance, they have some things in common. All Old World Raptors live in large social systems, led by either one or a few alphas. This dynamic is expressed in their naming. The smaller, non-alpha raptors have their species name suffixed with prey, while the alphas receive the suffix drome. While the dromes are considered large monsters, the prey are classified as small monsters. All Old World Raptor species also employ team strategies when hunting, which sets them apart from New World Raptors, which are generally solitary. Almost all runner wyvern grow some sort of decorative crest or ornament to organize their social hierarchy, and in the Old World Raptors, those crests take up a characteristic spot right on top of their heads, as opposed to the back of the head or the nose, for example. 
The blue-colored Velocii are the most common species of Old World raptor, inhabiting temperate and lush environments where they prey on herbivores such as the Aptenoth. Their most famous environment are the forests and hills, or verdant hills, of the Shrade region. They are in many ways the archetypical raptors, using enlarged foot talons as well as claws on their hands to shred their victims apart. Their small size makes them reliant on rushing bigger targets as a group. They also possess sophisticated vocal organs that allows them to communicate with each other in fairly elaborate ways. The Jia are almost identical to the Velocii, so much so that it remains a heated debate whether or not they should be reclassified as the latter's subspecies. Whatever the case may be, the Jia do not share habitats with their blue cousins, as they exclusively inhabit arctic climates. The Jia have a lighter coloration in order to blend into the snow, and they tend to form much larger herds than the Velocii. These herds can even have more than one drone, exemplifying the extraordinary level of cooperation the harsh frozen tundras request of their inhabitants. Jia also possess a small frost sack that can spew cold liquid that freezes in the cold air, functioning as a sort of ice projectile. The Jen, meanwhile, rule the deserts of the old continent. Their hide is yellow with green streaks, and even the small Jen prey have two small crests on their heads. This hide has a unique property. Under the scales sits a wet membrane that can neutralize most natural toxins, especially those that cause paralysis giving the gen some of the most sophisticated toxin resistance of the entire bird wyvern clade. This adaptation is likely due to the gen's own toxin. In their claws and teeth sit small glands that secrete a powerful paralytic agent, able to stun prey of any size almost instantly. Their hide thus likely serves to protect the gen from accidentally paralyzing each other. The gen's front fangs grow continuously and turn into massive tusks in the Alpha Gendrome. The Io are the most unusual Old World raptors, as they are not covered in scales and do not possess elongated hand and foot claws. Instead, the Io are clad in a moist hide that allows them to live in humid climates like jungles and other subtropical habitats. They have also rarely been seen in volcanic areas. The Io grow the most bizarre crest of all the raptors, a massive square that gradually deforms the head of the wyvern. This crest has the usual social functions, but it also holds a powerful poison organ. This allows even the small Io prey to produce a powerful venom that can be spit out of the mouth. This venom is the Io's main attack strategy, but it also functions as defense. Due to the efficiency of their poison sac and the relative rarity of actually using that poison through their mouth, the bodies of the Io are perpetually drenched in leftover poison. Their scales, their thin fangs, even their very bones are entirely coated in their poison, causing most predators and rivals to avoid the species altogether as even giving them a quick warning bite could be fatal. To call this just a fraction of what lies out there would be a criminal understatement. The density of life is mind-boggling, and one can never learn enough about it. What matters more than just knowing it all, however, is understanding the simple truth that no life is too small, too mundane, to hold within it the full breath of nature's beauty. Every corner of our world is beautiful. You just need to learn how to look. Thank you all so much for watching, and as usual, a very special thank you to our patrons, which include Fiction Ape, Cini, Anthony the Hedgehog, Arcturian711, Claire Miboon, Danilo Villavicencio, 
Drexian, Geo, Jameson Tate, Malcote O2, Mr. Pyramid, Mr. Meander, Pedefuego, Peroscoco, Person 212, Project Iceman, Russell, Vulgar Beast, Oakwood Tree, Iron Camel, and Courage. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.